Incredible what they provide for us. We need them. This is in today's Portland's news. You know, it's like Monday, June 3rd, 2013, Portland Press Herald. Really? Maine hives indicate big die off not to be in Maine. So, like all around the United States this year, there have been some 30% die offs in colonies. So, 30% of bees around the United States have died off, whether it be in North Dakota, California, Florida, an overall average. So this is great news for us, right? Like, you know, we're up here in Maine visiting our beekeepers and, you know, it's saying, hey, you know, the Maine, the Maine beekeepers are doing it right. You know, even the commercial guys, they're doing it right. There's actually 26 different varieties of wild blueberry clones, roughly. And so in a given field, you'll have a number of different varieties. So when you're looking across a field, some will be pinker and some will be whiter. And some you can see they'll have like long strands of blossoms. Other ones will be totally different and they'll have a, a different cluster arrangement of blossoms. So there's a lot of different varieties. We talk about varietal honey. We call our honey varietal. We also call it single floral source honey. And what that really means is we take our bees and we place them in a wild raspberry patch. We place them in an orange grove. And the bees go out, they collect nectar, they collect pollen, they bring it back, and they make honey. And each honey has a different flavor, a different color, a different texture, and they're completely individualistic. So, you know, when you're tasting wild raspberry honey and then you're tasting buckwheat honey and you're going, this is the same thing? Do you have different bees? You know, it's all about the flowers and the bees just, you know, do what, you know, nature has allowed. Usually uh, farmers will put at least two hives to the acre. So that means that you've got uh, roughly 100,000 bees working per acre of blueberries. Some years you might make uh, 20 pounds of honey per hive. You'll have other years where you're, you might make 10 pounds a hive. We had one year I think we made close to 50 pounds a hive. I think that we're kind of seeing this, this trend throughout the country and in terms of using bees for pollination, uh, all farming has just gotten more and more intensive. I mean, it's, it's everybody is being pushed to produce the most amount of, of product per acre or per plant that they can. So we're seeing this colony collapse disorder as part of that. Every time I meet somebody new and tell them about what I do, they say, what's going on with the bees? What's happening with the bees? I, I hear the bees are dying, what's happening? We don't really know why. People blame pesticides, people blame mites, people blame big agriculture. And I'll tell you that I don't know the answer. I know that it's a soup, it's all of these things. Um, but I feel that it's my responsibility to find those answers and help customers understand what they can do. Here we are at the bottling facility. raw we try to only heat the honey at about 100 degrees and that's kind of what classifies all honey in the raw. It's really a handmade product and that goes from the production of the honey itself to the bottling, the labeling, etc. Looking for anything that may be dead out, so we can uh, take it and uh, catch those swarms and put it in the place. All of these are good. In there. Got a little bit of honey and empty cells. Got something we can put some in. Okay, 
the only thing difficult is we probably got four, we got a bunch of swarms all together. If you just have one major one, you just dump it in the box. You know, we'll get some of these. We'll, we may not get four individual ones. I bit my leg. You alright? Yeah, one guy bit my leg. You wanna hold that? Yeah. I'm very fortunate to have worked with some of the greatest chefs in the world. And one of the things that I received from those experiences is the ability to and the desire to pair different foods together and find the perfect bite, right? Whether it's it's buckwheat honey and fresh ricotta cheese, or it's wild sage honey and Parmigiano Reggiano and a hazelnut, you find those bites that are just perfect. And you go, you go, so wait a minute, why don't I eat like this every day? We're in Portland, Maine, with Brant's. We're at Four Street Restaurant. He's going to make a couple of great dishes with B-Raw honey. So we're going to do. Uh, a couple things today. The first one is going to be a um, raspberry honey sauvignon. Uh, we're going to be serving that with a dark chocolate tort, as well as uh, we get a little caramel ice cream. He's got some fudge cookies in it too, which is really great. With it. Cool. Today I'm not using any wine. I'm just using honey, a tiny bit of sugar. Traditionally, you use like four to five wine to sweeten yeah, the wine. Usually it's marsala. Yeah. Yeah. Today I'm just doing honey, egg yolks, and a little bit of sugar. Um, and we're going to basically whip this. Over a really low heat until it becomes very ribbony. That's like a great, that's a great consistency right there. That's a raspberry wow. sauvignon. Oh, that's beautiful. And the that raspberry up? completely pops. Totally pops. Wow. Yeah, it stands up there. So good together. Nate, we're gonna have to do a, a, a sabayon for every single honey now. Right, and then to order, we just put a little bit of this on, kind of nappe it on the top, and let it slide down. Nice. And then with that bittersweet chocolate, I always love a little salt. Beautiful. A little out of it. And then we just torch it here at 4th Street, just because it, it gives a little extra caramelized flavor to it. Beautiful. Not to mention it's pretty. And that's how we'd serve it here. Um, and then with some fresh raspberries or whatever fruit. Right. This is a dark chocolate tort with wild raspberry honey sabayon. Caramel ice cream with chocolate cookie. Can I have a bite? Anybody? If there's one word that defines B Rod's purity, and I say that because when we're talking about honey, there is nothing more pure. Bottling in Soho, in the basement, this crazy basement. <laughs> oh, you'd seriously, if you stood up too tall, you'd be like, it was like, I swear it was like a seven foot ceiling in there. You just would stand up and constantly felt like you were going to rub your head against the ceiling. When she was, was pressing the button, what did you say? Oh, no, it, it was funny because I was kept watching the machine go and she's filling it up and I'm like, don't do that twice because I know what happens if you hit the button twice. Because <laughs> it fills the jar and it doesn't stop. It'll just, <laughs> it'll now go, every, another 10 ounces will go everywhere else. You know? <laughs> 